How did I get here? Three, two, one, go. I started my career as a radio producer. I worked with Cool Azubia Info at the time. I used to make jingles, adverts. I used to also read hypes. Okay, at some point I was reading hypes. Okay, so I used to make these jingles and promos for individuals, for the station itself, and for brands and organizations. That was how I started. Before I became a producer, I was a cleaner that just cleaned at school as we were in full until I went on stage to do my poetry one day because I used to be an active spoken word artist at the time. So my MD watched me and was like, okay, this lady is actually intelligent. Let me give her an opportunity to be great. I got promoted from the cleaning department to the audio production department, which is a fantastic story I have told here on my YouTube channel. I'm going to drop the link to that video in the description box for you guys to go check out. And I also linked it above the screen as well. So that was how my journey started. I started working with amazing producers, learning how to create jingles, and promos and I learned a lot about advertising as well. At the same time, I was schooling at Nigerian Institute of Journalism. I even made a jingle for them. I'm going to play that for you guys. From the early days of NIJ, it was just education. But 2012, there was a storm. The bright lights of entertainment broke the boredom. The first Mr. and Miss NIJ was announced. Ladies and gentlemen, brace yourselves. NIJ awaits who would be the next. So that was just my intro to this amazing career that I have. So let me take you through the trajectory of my audio engineering career. So I went from being a radio producer to working in the television organization at the time. Wazubia TV and Wazubia Max TV. I used to work with my colleague at the time. His name is Dozi, an amazing person that I learned a whole lot from. Then I moved from that place to becoming a full-time movie audio editor. In between all of this, I've gotten certifications and I've also gotten scholarships. The Ebony Life Creative Academy. I also got the Terra Academy, the one sponsored by MasterCard. Then I got my Pro 2 certification, courtesy of my community Audio Girl Africa. So that is how I have been growing. I have my eyes in the game industry. I know it is the next step for me and I know by the grace of God, I'm definitely going to get there. I have been able to work as a dialogue editor. I've been able to work as a final mix. I've been able to do um, full leads and SFX and all of that. So whatever journey I find myself, I find it a blessing and guys, welcome to my life. So in addition to the things I used to do in the TV station at the time, I used to record voiceovers for show segments. I used to create promos for um, shows they are bringing me, content that I bought, one that are being produced in the station. I also um, worked with some clients that would come to the station and I also did my own hustle as well on the side. Yeah, I like to try to the best of my ability to satisfy whoever I'm working with. So I just hope you watch till the end because I have a lot to share with you guys as a female in the audio industry. Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Glory Rex. I am a poet, a content creator, and a movie audio editor. In this particular video, I'll be taking you into a deep dive of my life and how things have been with me as a female audio editor. I currently live in Lagos, Nigeria, and I work remotely on several projects, and I also work on site as well. Then, for those that see me for the first time, please do not make this your last. I'd love to see you in my other videos. I create lots of videos. Please subscribe to my channel. You'll be in for an amazing ride. I actually create lots of videos. I'll drop some links below in the description box for you guys to go check out. And please subscribe to my channel. It helps to grow this community. Hit the red cute subscribe button. Turn on post notification. When I post another interesting video, you are notified. It is that simple and I'm so excited you did. 
my returning subscriber as you guys are the realest thing with this i cannot film this video without saying thank you to each and every one of you that has been a very strong support system from day one till now thank you so much and i'm so grateful guys so if anybody ever told me that there would be a point in my life where i would crave for rest than making money i would say it's a lie and somebody that likes to work and earn you understand what i mean there was this time i had like three projects at hand Ha! Ah, oh my god, that was one of the most challenging moments I felt like just having a break. I worked long hours, I slept like, I, I will I even say I slept, because I slept say around 3, 4, and I'm up at 7, because I want to meet up with this assignment, and my neck did hurt at the time, my legs were a bit swollen, my eyes were red, you know, that period, I would say, was one of the most challenging. If somebody may want to ask me, why do you want to kill yourself with work? Well, for somebody that is learning and growing in this industry, you may not really want to say no to the opportunities that are coming your way because most of our jobs are projects based. For the opportunities that were coming my way, I needed to um, show strength because I want to get to a point in my life where I am relaxed and I know that, yes, I have paid my dues. And what I thought about is, okay, the platform that these um, shows are going to be on, apart from the money, what it's going to do to my IMDB and all of all that. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to push myself. And so far, so good, I would say yeah i'm grateful i actually stretched myself when hilda broke the record of cooking for long hours a lot of people would have thought oh i could do this i can do this but the thing is how long have you been practicing your job on the marathon so at this point in my life i would say i can see the clear difference between working nine to five and being a creative in the creative industry because aside the fact i have my own youtube channel to create videos and upload weekly i also have a job that is not nine to five but i have to deliver so sometimes i find myself working long hours like say 10 11 12 i'm still up trying to get something done but for those that have nine to five once you get to your office, you work from say 9 to 5, you carry your bag, you're home. Except you have like extra work that you have to attend to. So the difference is not what I can explain alone. For those that are in the creative industry, you understand what I'm talking about. But will I prefer this job to any other thing? I'll say yes, because it has helped me um, develop myself. It has brought out the best in me. It has made me enjoy working to be honest apart from the fact that if you get a good deal you get a good pay that really made me stretch myself to say okay what am i really what yeah so i'm so excited in that regard so let me talk about another thing that i would say nobody prepared me for as you make more money in this job you tend to buy more gadgets it's like it's not enough <laughs> it's like you want to buy more it's like what is going on like the more you make money you make money to buy more gadgets to be better the good thing is that when people reach out to you you get to make gain because you use your own equipment so you keep the money for the rentals and you know you do the job at the same time so pretty much is one of the amazing fantastic facts about this particular industry i would say i've seen this career from a different perspective than the way i used to see it when i created my first video where i talked about the life of a movie audio editor for those that have not seen that i'm going to link it above the screen and also drop it in the description box as well for you guys to check out for those that are interested i would say i've really learned a lot life then and life now is completely different i've had lots of experiences i've grown my network has increased so has my net worth okay let's not go into that but yeah negotiating money with a client is the easiest part of any contract or any business deal the most important thing is will you get that job done for the purpose of getting an opportunity next time i have a lot to say about this i'm going to elaborate as we progress in this video okay bear in mind that the reason why i introduced myself from how i started to how the journey has been so far it's for you to get a background you know knowledge of where i am coming from different engineers have their own experience how they started you know who brought them to the industry and all of that but in my own case i did not at the time attend any college of sound or any institution i just learned you know found my way to the top as i kept watching people observing reading and watching lots of youtube videos in this industry both video audio editors and sound audio editors use different softwares there are several of them so 
um, the most important thing to me as an audio engineer is the sound that will be getting to me or that will be sent to me. Like, is it something that is in sync with the video? I'm talking about visual and sound in this context, okay? I've had an encounter where I got a file that was sent to me in a different frame rate and it was not syncing with the video that was given to me. So if ever you find yourself in that situation, please speak up on time. If it's for them to be export and send to you, trust me, you'll be fine. Than having to work all over again. I have made my own mistakes. I've learned. I've had challenges. I've had my victory moments. I thought to make this video for the purpose of documenting how my journey has been and also encourage anybody that is you know trying this so let me tell you the demanding side of this job as a female okay this job is really demanding it's going to take a lot of your time if you're not careful you're going to break ties with a lot of family members you're also going to find yourself wanting to solve a problem let me give an example for a dialogue editor that is working on an epic series like myself one of the challenges I've encountered personally is when an actor is talking in a low tone and there are lots of cricket sounds, you know. So you have to intelligently solve that problem so that you don't make the actor sound like a robot. And at the same time, your, your audio level is clear enough for people to listen. When people are watching, they want to enjoy the dialogue. So however, it has to be seamless. So that is one interesting part of this job that you have to, you know, always keep growing. So you just have to find time to draw a balance between work and family. And I would say for family members, try to be as vulnerable as possible. I, I remember one time I was working on a project yeah, and at some point everything went south. I had to call my mom. I'm like, oh my god, I'm going through this. I was even crying, and she was like, oh, don't worry, she prayed with me. But somebody like my mom, with what she knows about my job, the times I call her, the good times, you know, the bad times, the challenging times, the times I have something to laugh about that I call her, she's going to understand when I tell her, okay, I'm busy. So for other people that you have intimate relationship with like that, it's also good that you let them know. Not just, okay, I'm busy, I'm busy. They have to have the time to reach out to you because the thing about this job is it comes and goes, it comes and goes, and you are getting older. I always tell myself, if I detach myself from family, what will I have left? Don't forget that as a female, you also have a home. So I try to balance it, although I'm very lucky that my husband is a VFX artist, and most times we find ourselves working on the same project, which has been a blessing. My advice is that, Yes, the job is demanding, but you always find your way around it. So let me use this point to, you know, give a shout out to my cousin, if I mean. I remember I was discussing with him at the time that I was working on a very big project. I was sharing with him how my eyes were watering and red and my legs were swollen. I just needed to take a walk, you know, to relax and, you know, cool my head. And I was so happy. As we were talking on the spot, he just sent me some money. Some family members are actually amazing because they understand what you're going through. Just use wisdom to explain to them what you're going through and hope Hopefully, they will understand. So there's a reason why I started talking about my journey from how I started to how it is at the time I'm filming this video. Okay, I was not bothered about you know exporting large files because whatever I was doing it was within the premises of the station. People would just come record and just create something that is creative or catchy and you know submit that to my boss that would listen if um, if they were okay with this thing, it was going to go on air. When I moved to the movie industry, it is a completely different experience because sometimes people will give you jobs. Everybody's not even in the same um, geopolitical zone. Everybody's not even in the same country or maybe not in the same place. You might just get a part of a job. It's like a chain for each just work on a particular part. And that was when I realized the importance of knowing exactly what things are being called when it comes to sound you have to know things by the name it is known internationally so that you don't sound like a joke to some people so those were the things i started learning more about um, mp3 files wave files omf and um, aaf like all of these you know terms like trying to understand how it works when i get files in this format how do i work because most times the files that come to me as a movie audio editor are very large files and you don't want to waste a lot of data you know sending and sending and receiving the wrong files so it has to be right it's very important to keep developing your skills in this industry if not you might just realize that you're out of the block and for a female audio editor you have to keep proving yourself keep studying 
and I try my best to not just be that girl that just sits, you know, and just take credit. I do my best to work on myself, get better, and that is what has helped me. Okay, apart from the fact that I'm a social person, I also try to make sure that I follow my job through. I learn from my mistakes and I try to do better. It'd be nice for me to share with you some tips that would help you, okay, because I'm talking from experience, right? Nobody wants to get money and told to refund the money and I know how that is going to feel like. So all I would say is, before you get the job, try and watch it through. Is it something you can do? Is it something you can't do? State that from the beginning. The audio software you're going to use to do the work is another thing that you should look into. For those that are working in the movie industry, most of them, most people prefer to use Pro Tools. Okay, for people that don't have Pro Tools license, how do you go about it? Okay, so I use DaVinci Resolve and I also use Pro Tools and I use Adobe Auditions. I've been able to experience these softwares in their most interesting state, and I can tell you for a fact that not all solutions you find on YouTube because people are using different you know softwares the good thing is that a community of audio engineers you should be able to get one or two answers when you whenever you run into problems some people are nice enough to help you and answer questions whenever you get into challenges or troubles or trying to troubleshoot your way out of any difficult tax to so be nice to understand the work pattern of the person that is giving you the job because different people want different things i've worked with somebody that prefers his dialogue seamless very intentional about your feed in and feed out there's so many people like that so for those that do dialogue editing you understand exactly what i'm talking about for those that live in nigeria for those that learned how I didn't go to sound school to be nice for you to learn what certain things are called because whatever it is called in sound is most likely what is going to be known as globally irrespective of language okay there's a lot of studying to be done like a lot of studying because you have to know what certain things are called globally so that you, so that whenever you're explaining what you did it will be easier for the next person that's going to pick up from where you stopped to be able to say okay this person stopped here so I can take it up from here there are several plugins that we use for different things, for effects, for balance, to make the audio sound crisp and clear. You have to be careful with how you apply plugins because you can either apply plugins to make the audio sound great or make the audio sound mm, terrible. So plugins come in different ways. Some people get ideas like officially buy license and all of that. And some, you know, get from friends, family members or those that they can find. However, it's good to just have you know things you need at least from the basic level like sound card headphone all of that so be aware of cyber thieves for those that put their work on servers you know these things actually exist if you don't find time to work out you find out that you are getting very very fat i'm not joking i try to find a way to work out in the evening or in the mornings i just i just get active because sitting down for so long will make you gain a lot of weight if you like my top please let me know it's actually a graph Fitty top. I love it so much. I thought to wear it. I chose it particularly for this video. You can see the microphone here. There are other interesting things written on it. If you love the top, please comment. I would love to hear your thoughts about this particular interesting top of mine. This video came from the heart. I'm so happy I finally filmed this video as an upgrade or as an update to the previous video I recorded talking about the life of the movie audio editor. While I'm reminiscing on the title of the video, let me know what you prefer to have been the title of this video, okay? Who knows? I'm excited to change it and put what you have suggested. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate everybody that has been a blessing to my journey. Those that have given me resources, those that have given me platform, I am so very grateful. Look at where I am right now. I'm so happy. I'm thankful because it can only be God, it can only be grace, it can only be everybody that has been beside me. Thank you guys so much. I'm so grateful. I'll see you in my next video. Do not forget to like, subscribe, and share, especially if you found value from watching. One video is not enough to share my journey and everything I have learned. As I progress in my career, I'll make more videos from time to time and I hope somebody out there is encouraged and let me know if you are in the comment section. I have my email below. You can write me privately. I'll be so honored. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you in my next. Bye.